Okay, in this problem we're working with AI and BI. These are just indexed families of sets. And the little i is an element of the set capital I. So these are just indexed families of sets on I. And we're going to find another set. We're going to call it C sub I comma J. And all this is is the Cartesian product of set AI with BJ. And we can create this set CIJ as this cross product for every single element in the Cartesian product of I with I. So pick an element I, pick an element J, grab set A sub I, and grab set B sub J, and we form the set C of I comma J as just their Cartesian product. So we're kind of generating C from sets A, I, and B, J. So what we're going to do is we're going to show the following. We're going to show that the union of all the sets C is equal to the union of all the sets A, I, Cartesian product with all the sets B, I. Okay? And intuitively this kind of makes sense. It kind of says that I can either union over all A sub I and then and union over all B sub I and then take that cross product or I can take the cross products individually. A sub I cross with B sub J and union all those sets. So it's just kind of a matter of where we take the union. It seems like these should be the same, and we're going to actually show that these are the same. So most of the time when we want to show a subset relationship, or I'm sorry, an equality relationship, we show subset relationship twice. So if we can show that the union of C is a subset of the right side, and the right side, union A, Cartesian product union B, is a subset of the left side, then we'll have established that these two sets are equal. One of the things I'll do here just to save a little writing is I'll be a little sloppy on my notation and I'll abbreviate things like this as just the union of C, but that's really just shorthand for the correct notation, the union over all tuples I comma J in the Cartesian product I of I with I of C I comma J, etc. So I'll be a little terse on notation, but we're just saving a little writing. Okay, so the first thing let's do is let's choose an arbitrary element from the left-hand set. Okay, so if we have an arbitrary element from the left-hand set, what does this mean? Well, that means there has to be some element in this cross product, and let's just call that element or index M and N, such that XY is in the set C of M comma N. So all I'm doing is unioning over all these sets C of I comma J. So if I'm in the union, I have to be in at least one of those sets C of I comma J. And I'm going to call that set that I'm in the set with coordinates M comma N. So there has to exist an M and an N. And those M comma N have to be in the Cartesian product I cross I. So that's what I'm going to call this set. Well, by definition, what is the set C of M comma N? Well, that's just A of sub M Cartesian product with B sub N. That's just by definition. So if x comma y is in c of m comma n, that means that by the definition of c and m of m comma n, that x has to be in the first set a m, and y has to be in the second set b sub n, just as to how Cartesian products work. Well, what does this mean? If x is in one of the sets a sub m, then it's going to be in the union across all the sets over i, right? Because it's in the set AM. Eventually, when I'm unioning over all I in capital I, I'm going to get to the value where I is equal to M, and I'll be an element of A sub M. So if X is in A sub M, then it's definitely in this union over all sets A. Similarly, if Y is in the set B sub N, it will also be in the union over all the B sets. So if x is in the first set and y is in the second set, that means that the tuple xy is in the set union over all ai, Cartesian product with union over bi, because that is how Cartesian products work. So at this point we have established, since we started with an arbitrary element in union c, and shown that it was an element of union a, Cartesian product union b, we've shown that union c is a subset of union A cross union B. Okay, so that's half the proof. For the second half of the proof, we're going to go the other way. We're going to choose an arbitrary element out of the right-hand set. So let x comma y be an arbitrary element of union A cross union B. What does this mean? Well, just by the definition of the 
Cartesian product, that means x has to be an element of the first set, so x has to be in union A, and y has to be in union B. That's just how Cartesian products work. So what does this mean? Well, if x is an element of this union, then it has to be in at least one of these A sets. So as I'm unioning over the set capital I, eventually I have to get to a specific index in I where I'm in the set A sub I. So I'm going to call that set A sub K. So there has to exist some K in the index set I such that X is in A sub K. Similarly, as I'm unioning over all the B's, there has to be at least one of the B sub I's that I'm in, and I'm going to call that set B sub L. So there has to exist this index L, which is in the set I, such that Y is in B sub L. Well, what does this mean? Well, if I am in, if X is in A K, and Y is in B sub L, then we know that X Y is in the Cartesian product of X K and B O. So X of X and Y, X comma Y has to be in the set A sub K cross B sub L. Well, what is this? This is nothing more than what we defined as C sub K comma L. That's just the set C K L. So we know that now that X comma Y is in the set C of K comma L. And now we're almost done. You can see what's going to happen. If I'm in one of these sets and I'm unioning over all the sets, then I'm also an element over the union of all of them. Because I know eventually I'm going to get to I equals K and J equals L, and XY is going to be in C, K comma L, because I've shown that to be true. So since I'm in C, K, L, I'm in the union over everything, since one of those things that we're unioning over is the set C, K comma L. And we're done. We started with an arbitrary element in un union A cross union B, and we've shown that this element is in union C. So in this part, we've established that union A cross union B is a subset of union C. If we combine this with our first result, we've now established the fact that these two sets are indeed equal, because the left-hand side is a subset of the right, and the right-hand side is a subset of the left.